Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Coffee in the Cloud. I'm Kara Wanagatima with Microsoft Teams Engineering and your host. Today we're going to talk about a really important topic, product feedback. Product feedback is critical to knowing what to do next as an administrator to make sure your services are healthy and also as a champion to make sure you're getting the most business value out of Microsoft 365. So we're going to talk about that topic. Let's hop in. I had a chance recently to go on vacation, which is a little bit of a unique thing over these last couple of years. And there's one thing that I was really clear on as I went away, truly unplugged and then came back is that perspective is everything. I got a chance to go to Greece. It was something that was on my bucket list. And as my husband and I traveled there and back, it was a fantastic opportunity to see many small businesses, different sorts of vendors, large organizations, all having a different experience with each other and with technology. Now more than ever, it's important to realize one key point. The users are the experts on their experience, not us. You know, oftentimes we think because of the information that we understand and know that we're the ones who actually can get the most uh, out of the experience on behalf of our users, but actually they really know what's best. So how do we do that? How do we make sure that we're having the right kind of relationship with our end users? Well, we have to prioritize end user feedback. It's really important that we make sure that we're doing this. Um, and there's a variety of ways that we can do this in Microsoft 365. I'm really happy to say that we can use in product feedback in a variety of ways, and we can do direct user feedback as well. So with the combination of these two things, we can make sure that we're really listening to the people who are the experts on their experience. Many times we're thinking about more advanced scenarios than our actual users are. They may be struggling with core collaboration scenarios, like how to share documents with people outside the organization. So let's make sure to use some of these built-in features to our best advantage. Let's talk about the particular policies that you can configure in Microsoft 365 around feedback. There are over 2,800 policies in Microsoft 365, but there's a few you need to pay attention to for this scenario. Uh, I've listed them here on the left-hand side of the slide and their default state. Now, pro tip, when you come into the tool, it looks as if these policies are not configured. That's actually the value that the experience says, but the default state is always in play. So the default state for users being able to submit feedback to Microsoft and to receive and respond to in product surveys is on and the other three are off. Um, all of these are important and we very much hope that you will allow your users to send their feedback all the way through your system to ours because we read all of this feedback. It's how we improve the product. It's how we identify bugs and difficulties. And I've included here on the slide, but also in the comments, the show notes down below, the links for where you can learn more about about this and how we handle the data. But it's really important to go in and configure these policies uh, to, in a way that will be applicable to your organization. You can not have content, uh, feedback content, come all the way to Microsoft, but you'll still be able to see it in the admin center itself. Let's do a quick walkthrough here of what actually happens when you go to configure this. So the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to go to config.office.com. And as I mentioned, you need those tenant admin permissions and you're go right on the home page. It's going to show you a card for those office policies. Um, the security policy advisor is also something I recommend, but it won't be covered in this particular video. On the far right hand side of this slide, I'm showing the navigation when it's fully expanded. There's a lot of great stuff in this particular experience. So if you go ahead and click on that office policies area, you'll be able to create, it'll tell you you don't have any policy configurations if in fact that's the case for your tenant and you'll be able to create one. Then you'll, you'll fill in a name and a description and you'll select the user group that you want to have this policy apply to. Now this is the reason that some people use a group policy manager, or PowerShell or other tools, because when you do it this way, you can only select one particular group at a time. 
But when, once you do that, once you've selected that group, then you come in and you select the policies. And this is where you can see, I put in a search term feedback, and now I get the seven policies that I wanna take a look at. Um, two of them uh, are not relevant to this particular scenario. Provide feedback with sound and provide feedback with animation. Uh, that was regard to the client behavior, but you can see the others that I had identified on one of the prior slides. So I'm gonna go in and I'm going to configure those different uh, policies. And once I click on one, I'll be able to see here, uh, as I mentioned before, that it comes up as not configured, even though the default state as shown in our documentation is actually in effect for the tenant. So I can come in here, I can hit that drop down arrow and change it to enabled, right? And then I can say okay and go ahead and save that policy. It's going to go through and it's going to create a policy for you. And when you done, when you're done, it will show you uh, the name of the policy that you have created, a feedback policy there. And in this case, uh, it's for the core team. Now, recommendation status is with regard to the security policies I mentioned earlier. And so, uh, you know, that's not relevant in this particular video. But again, I highly encourage you to do some uh, research on that so that you can see what that's like. Now, in the client applications, people have an opportunity to provide uh, feedback via the I like something, I don't like something, the smiley faces. And what that happens to that feedback is it comes here into the admin center under the product feedback area. So now I'm actually in the admin portal, the Microsoft 365 admin portal. And under that home area in, in health, I can go to the blade for product feedback. And it's actually showing me the feedback I'm getting from users all across my organization, and I can filter it, which I love. What channel are they on in their office tools? Uh, what product am I interested in seeing feedback on? We'll capture this. So maybe people are having an issue in Excel you need to drill down on. Well, you can see that. What platform is it uh, in regards to? And then also what type of feedback? Was it a survey or was it an app? So as you can see, there's plenty of feedback information that you can get here. And what's important from this experience is that you can export it to CSV. So you can export this and start to keep that historical data, maybe use Power BI to build a dashboard or something else. But the important thing here is that you're actually understanding uh, what your users are having an issue with. Nothing is more important than the voice of your users and the way that they themselves are experiencing feedback. And that's also true when I think about uh, the work that we're doing here at Microsoft. So now it's your turn. I'm happy to announce that the, what's now available is the Microsoft Feedback Portal for Microsoft Teams. This feedback portal is a new experience uh, that we've recently launched. Again, it is in preview and you'll be able to see it and learn more about it at aka.ms Teams Feedback Launch. So we're using our own first party tool to gather feedback about Microsoft Teams. You'll see other um, Microsoft applications start to use this portal in coming days. Right now you can access Edge and Microsoft Teams, but more is coming. And we're really excited to hear from you. Um, it's, this is an important step forward for us because of course we want to make sure that we are able to um, close the loop with the feedback, really help you see how your feedback is influencing the product. I've actually never worked in a product like Microsoft Teams where it's so influenced by feedback. Many of the fast features that we delivered during the uh, first months of the pandemic were derived directly from your feedback and especially that of our education customers. And so we're continuing to do that as we uh, move into this new experience. Whatever you do as you think about feedback going forward, uh, it's just really important how you take it, right? You're going to get feedback that isn't going to be very comfortable to hear. We certainly do every day, but that's the most important feedback. We don't just want happy news. We really want to understand the issues that people are having. And if you're an administrator or a champion, I encourage you to take that kind of non-judgmental, open-hearted way of taking that feedback. That's really a big part of our People First initiative. If we put the people at the center of all the work we do, everything is gonna work out. So that's my episode today. Thank you so much for that. And stay tuned for part two of this, which will be all about gathering feedback from your users with Microsoft Forms and Adaptive Cards. Stay tuned and we'll see you soon.